the shack's house. 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 What's up, Shaq Houses? How y'all doing? Yeah, it's your boy Shaq House here. Sorry for the delay and getting this recap to y'all. Yeah, I've been on vacation for Labor Day. I was in Connecticut. Great time up there, dude. Yeah, but now I'm back at it. And what's the title of this episode? She-Hulk episode number four. Is this not real magic? And it begins of all places. We're at? At a magic show. Mm Mm-hmm. Turns out Donnie Blaze, played by Reese Coiro, who's the uh, husband for the She-Hulk attorney at law director, Cat Coiro. Yeah, he's the, he's the um, magician in question, Donnie Blaze. And if you recall, Reese Coiro, he used to play Billy Walsh on Entourage. He was that overhyped director who did Medellin. Yeah, um, he's a, a here, he's a hack, somewhat. I mean, you can see the strings with his little floating act. And it turns out he's an ex-sorcerer. He can conjure up portals. And as part of his act, he's got to get get like a volunteer from the audience. So who does he get? A drunken white girl named Madison with two N's, right? A ditzy little white girl, but she could be, she looks awfully fun to be around, to tell you the truth. Um, yeah, he sends her into a portal, right? He sends her into another dimension. And then the scene cuts over to Nepal, to Wong's home at the Sorcerer Supreme headquarters or whatnot. And uh, it turns out Wong, he's a big TV fan. Yeah, he's watching The Sopranos right now, right when uh, Madison gets por- gets portaled in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he wants to know how she got there, and he was able to surmise that Donnie Blaze, a cut-rate magician as he calls him, was behind all this. Yeah, it turns out that... Um, <laughs> also, also, Donnie... He's got a black assistant, a man, an old black man named Cornelius with him at all times. And it kind of reminds me of the magical Negro, the magical Negro trope that we saw in the Green Mile with Michael Clark Duncan and with Will Smith in The Legend of Bagger Vance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Madison, Madison being in Wong's home, she's spoiling, spoiling his viewing of The Sopranos and later This Is Us as well, too. But he keeps her around anyway. I bet you, I bet you that Wong, he hit that in his spare time. Not that I blame him. And the fact that she has a pet name for him later, Wongers, Wongers let me stay in his home, buddy. Yeah, that kind of lends credence to my belief that, he, that, that she let him smash. But anywho, speaking of someone who's trying to get smashed, Jennifer Walters. Yeah, she, we cut to her apartment and she breaks the fourth wall to throw shade on viewers who are always happy with the appearance of a male guest. And she says, and I quote, it's like giving the show a, a Twitter armor for a week or something. Her father comes over to help her beef up her security system, right? After, after her encounter with the wrecking crew during the last, ep- last week's episode. But she insists that she's all right. At work, we see her to-do list. And one of the things we see is this little Easter egg right here. You see it? Yeah, the little, uh, the little injunction right there. Um, the plaintiff versus defendant. Yeah, you see it. All right. Um, but she's also setting up a dating profile for herself as well, too. Yeah, and that's when Wong, he portals into her office. Yeah, he tells her how he wants to sue Donnie Blaze. We learn a little bit more about Blaze right then and there, too. And no, he's not related to the Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze. It's just a pun on Johnny Blaze's name. Donnie, he's a former student of the Mystic Arts, but he was expelled after a week because he started doing using his powers to do some frat boy do some frat boy, party boy favors and whatnot. Bringing kegs in and bringing his party, his fellow party frat boys into into the uh, the Sorcerer Supreme training grounds as well. However, Jen's going to have a hard time setting precedent for unlicensed people using the Mystic Arts since there's never a physical contract between Wong, the instructors, and any of their students at all. I hope we get a Doctor Strange appearance somewhere in here soon. That'd be funny. At, at the bar, Nikki is helping is helping Jen with her um with her uh, deposition, but also critiques her profile, her dating profile on Matcher.com. Yeah, that's what the uh, that's what the dating app in the MCU is called, Matcher. Yeah, she suggests that Jen create a She-Hulk profile, but uh, Jen doesn't want to go along with it. In court, 
no, 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 not in court, but in Donnie, in Donnie Blaze's home, Wong and Jen, they slap him and Cornelius with a cease and desist order. And <laughs> the pair, they're met with aggression by Wong, who insists that being a Sorcerer Supreme is not competition, but he, but he does throw a dig at him saying that I'm more mystical than you in my sleep. Oh, not competitive, huh? Next, Jen, she gets a match on Matcher and goes to and goes with her date to some sports bar, right? But the guy turns out to be an inattentive, uninterested douchebag who's only interested in bragging about himself, right? He even he's even such a douche that he leaves her to foot the bill. You think because she's a lawyer that she that money is like pocket change for her? The fuck out of here. In court, though, oh yeah, and casually he rates her as a six over the phone as he as he's talking to one of his boys as he's going out. But back in court, the scene cuts to court, and it turns out they bring in a witness. Wong and Jen bring in a witness. They bring in who? Madison with two N's. Mm -hmm. She comes in. She he, Wong portals her in from a party, so she's dressed sexy, has a drink in her hand, and she's somewhat tipsy, right? And uh, like I said before, she calls him Wongers, and the lawyer, Donnie's lawyer, argues that, what's it called? You can't you can't copyright magic. And to prove the point, he proves to be a magician as well, too. Like basically a cat in the hat, pull out different multicolored handkerchiefs out of his coat pocket, etc. Things like that. Yeah, he persuades the judge to allow Donnie to continue to continue with his profession until the judge makes her ruling. Meanwhile, Jennifer at home, she finally relents and creates a She-Hulk dating profile for herself on Matcher. And that gets her a fuck ton of dates. Yeah, including including an insecure bodybuilder, uh, a pretentious movie director, uh, um, a scientist who can't help but to fetishize her. And finally, one who seems promising, uh, a young black pediatric oncologist, right, who, seemed, who, see, who listens to what she has to say and suggested they split some fries and they go home. Jennifer brings him home with her and she's about to hook up. But meanwhile, while this is happening, Donnie continues his show. And as per standard operating procedure, I guess, he has to bring out a drunken white girl from the audience to be his volunteer. But this time it, go, it goes to hell. Literally, literally it's somewhat because he conjures up a portal to another dimension where a bunch of fly, flying baby demon, demonic goblins start coming out of it and start attacking the audience. I'm talking about the kind of baby goblins that look like what we saw in that Jennifer Connelly, David Bowie movie, Labyrinth, right? But um, right then and there, Wong, Wong is at his home watching This Is Us, and that's when Donnie port teleports over to him to get his assistance in getting rid of the demons. And Wong is like, I'm doing this for the sake of the universe, nigga, not for you. And then he goes to get to get his to get some more assistance. He goes to get She-Hulk while she's at home about to hook up, right? He gets her assistance to deal with the demons. Yeah, while she's handling some of the demons, he creates a portal that vortexes them to an arctic dimension so that they freeze to death. So then She-Hulk takes the opportunity to tell Donnie and Cornelius to accept the cease and desist order, which they do, and that, and that her office will be in contact the next morning. And she goes back to her home to hook up with a nice doctor and even carries him, carries him in her arms back to her bedroom. The next morning, she's, Jennifer Walters is sprung, making this dude breakfast, having a Belinda Carlisle song playing. Uh, but he freaks out. He freaks out when he sees just Jennifer Walters and not She-Hulk. Yeah, he, he fetishizes her too. He freaks out, gets his coat, and leaves. And then the episode ends with Jennifer Walters getting some legal papers delivered to her. Titania is suing her. Yeah, Titania is suing her because she is smartly and shrewdly trademarked the She-Hulk name before Jennifer even thought to do so. That's how it ended. I'm not going to say the post credit scene at all, but I thought this episode was kind of, eh. It felt like filler. Yeah. Yeah, never mind the fact that it was just as short as the other episodes, but it's like nothing really, nothing really like stood out for me that made me feel like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. But with, with the show being slated to go for nine episodes, I suppose they, they're allowed to have some filler in there too that, that makes us antip anticipate for something better. Yeah, and speaking of something better, yeah, I got a surprise for you guys next week, Shaq Housers. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I think you'll like it. 
That's what we got right now. So tune in next week for that surprise and for my recap of episode number five on She-Hulk. Have a good week, Shaq Housers. Later. Mansion, apartment. Shaq House. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>